Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about leaving your job. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Hi Frederick, I am a long term, long time subscriber and regular watcher of your vlog. I need your help and advice. I am on my first job and I'm doing React development in a small IT company for about a year. I'm not unhappy at this company, but it is very small. The good thing is that I work on projects from scratch. The bad thing is that I don't work on any big projects. Now the company is finishing the React project and they have asked me to do Java work. I know basic Java and would love to learn it better, but does switching languages so early in my career before mastering one hurt my long-term career prospects? I'm scared of becoming a full-stack developer that knows a little bit of everything but is, master, is a master of nothing. I feel like I should leave this company and look for a bigger firm where I can do large-scale React projects. Is leaving after one year in my first job too early? What do you think? So... First things first, I don't think that you have to worry about leaving your job too early. And the simple reason is because there's not really any... After one year of work, yeah, sure, you could make the argument that that is a little bit too early. But at the same time, it's, it's significant enough, the time that you have been there, for it to be in your benefit in the at the next project. And the the thing is... As I've said a few times before, guys, the average time that most companies are looking for when they're looking for software developers is that you have one to five years of work experience. That is usually the sweet spot. And you have one year. So sure, that is on the lower end of things, but it is still relevant and it is still it's still going to be to your benefit. You're still maybe not going to see the massive super, super duper... Um, demand for your profile uh, as a software developer as the people who have like five years or something like that or even more than that but it's going to be significant and if you explain very simply that well uh, the company was asking me to go in a different direction than what I wanted to do that's a very normal thing because if you're I mean if you've been doing react development and they now switch focus in the company and they want you to do other things that you may not be so interested in well it's there's no nothing really wrong with that like why would you I mean if if you work for a company who does let's say that you're really into Golang and all of a sudden they go and say hey you know what uh, we're gonna switch everything over to PHP and you don't like PHP well then there's not really anything wrong with you saying that no actually I want to co continue on Golang because I really like that or whatever language and so you switch jobs and that is something that is going to be v it's going to be very understandable it's going to be the most normal thing in the world when you explain that to a future employer it's not going to be weird in any way so don't you know don't be afraid that you're going to be viewed as this unreliable type of person because this is a, this is the sort of change within the company uh, work environment that very very clearly justifies you moving to somewhere else it would have been another thing if you said that well i i never get along with any of my coworkers or and they're all idiots or something like that if you were moving for some arbitrary reason where you have some type of work time work issues so far that might be something that you should keep to yourself or to kind of downplay a little bit because it could be potentially something that damages uh, you in the in the next job not necessarily but it could happen but at the same time i want you to understand that if if you are interested in learning java as an example uh, i think that we need to touch on something because you expressed an, a, a concern about getting to be a mass uh, getting to be a jack of all trades and master of none with, without any deep understanding of a specific thing so getting really really good at say react that's a great thing just as it's a great thing to get really really good at java but the thing is that if you get sort of good at react or depending on how you want to define it uh, and then you switch over to java it sure you might be concerned that you're not good enough at React and then you start learning Java and then you're not so good at that either. But 
you have to understand that you're not actually losing your expertise in React. You can maintain that. I mean, sure, it's going to be a little bit like riding a bicycle. If you're not doing React development for quite some time and you're only doing Java, it's going to take a little, like a little bit of time maybe to just get back on that horse, just as anything when you don't do it for quite some time and you get back and try, try it again. It's going to take some time to uh, to start up again. but. Uh, it's it's not going to be like you're starting from scratch. You're not losing your expertise in React just because you do some Java. You're actually going to gain something from learning Java. Now, if you don't want to learn Java, that's perfectly fine. Nobody is going to force you to, or nobody's saying that you have to learn Java. But if you're genuinely interested in that thing, there's no real downside to for you to diversify a little bit, unless you're aim, your, your goal is to be a master of React, if that is the thing that you want. And that's the thing I want, like, not just a subscriber, I want you, just everybody who might be listening to this to understand. You may have he gotten the idea, of heard from somewhere, that being a full stack developer or someone who does a lot of different types of languages means that you're going to be a worse developer in something specific. And the reality is, guys, that that can be true for certain developers. Guys, I've worked with many developers who have spent most of their career in a specific language, but they're not pushing themselves to the max. And I've met software developers who have been full stack developers, so they've been working in different types of roles, who are at the very least as good as the people who st stuck with that specific language. Now, there are absolutely certain benefits to going really deep on a specific language, but not all the time. You have to understand that uh, if you master a specific language, there's only to a certain point where that really, uh, until that doesn't really matter anymore. And uh, I'll give you a really bad example, but let's say that you become the best of the best at, say, JavaScript. Well, at some point, the only way for you to get better at JavaScript is to actually not just know the syntax of the thing and all the, the tools and the environment and so forth. You're going to have to like push it to the point where you know like these quirky, weird things or like uh, performance and so forth. And sure, on paper, that sounds really great. But for most employers, that is something that is a novelty thing. It's a nice to have type of thing. What they're looking for is something that is further back. They're, they're just looking for someone who actually has some strong understanding of the language and can produce things effectively. They're not looking for some t someone who is like a research level developer within JavaScript per se, unless that's the thing that they're looking for. So what I want you to understand is that you can absolutely go deep on something but that is not necessarily going to mean that you're going to have a much higher market value than the people who kind of do more things than that or that you're going to suck at all the things that you try because at the end of the day it doesn't really like it, it, what matters is how much are you investing in the things that you are doing uh, an analogy that might make sense to you is that if you have someone who does some jogging and exclusively does a little bit of jogging and then you have an extreme sporter who does a lot of different types of um, sports and does jogging as well, well that person even though they're diversifying and doing kind of a lot of things, they're still pushing it harder than the person who's just doing the jogging. And that's, that, me, that, that means that they're still going to be fitter. And it's the same thing with, you, with us software developers. Just because you just use one single thing forever and ever, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be a better developer uh, than all the people who do multiple things. You might get really good, but it's not a given. It really does only come down to how much are you investing? How much are you pushing yourself? So what I want you to take away from this is that if you feel like you want to do more large-scale work with something like React, then I think that you should go for it. I think that if, because it's a very normal argument. I mean, I even myself, I actually had this exact reason for a while back when I switched jobs, where I was working at a very small agency and I told I started working at the big company because I wanted to understand large-scale development better. So that's a very normal thing. And doing and moving from one company to another after a year, there's nothing wrong with that, sure. You might get some some company here and there that feels that that's kind of a little bit w weird. Maybe I don't think so. 
there might it might be most of them it's 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 in the sweet spot like it's not going to be weird i think at all and when you give the reason that you you're doing this because you actually want to challenge yourself more this will be one of the most common reasons why people switch jobs in the first place especially at a junior level so I think that you should take a look at that, but I also want you to understand that diversifying yourself a little bit and learning more than one language is actually, it, there are a lot of perks to doing that. You shouldn't feel forced to do it, but don't be scared that if you do it, that you're, you're, gonna, you're gonna suck as an as a IT professional, because that's just not true. Whether or not you're, you succeed as a software developer or any type of IT expert, co really comes down to how much are you investing? Because if you are, you can half-ass being a developer on one single stack and not be as and not actually be as great as somebody who has a lot of different languages and stacks under their belt who has really been pushing it. Just as you can half-ass learning a lot of stuff and not getting and get good at that at these different things that you're doing right. So it really comes down to that thing: how much are you willing to invest to get really good at something? And I think that that's the way you should think about it, what you, your preferences are, rather than being scared to try something out. Have a great day.